Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar run for the UK if you have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days so it is going to continue to stay fairly mild and dry over the coming days but we are starting to see the first signs of a little bit of precipitation perhaps at the end of this week into the weekend as we do see a slight weakening in the higher pressure. As we get into the longer range though high pressure will hang on for the foreseeable future but we are starting to see big changes around the middle of the month that have been hinted at in the past few videos. But today, the GFS goes for the first proper cold run that we've seen through this autumn. Of course, we have seen colder runs, but not really producing anything monumental because it is still autumn. We haven't got that much Arctic air to our north. But at the end of this latest GFS, we see a proper North Atlantic and Greenland block full-blown north to northeasterly winds pulling in not only chilly air but properly cold air that would be suitable for snow even to low-lying areas. Now it is only one run, it is right in the extended range but it does follow on quite nicely from what we've been seeing within the past few videos following those trends perhaps signalling the risk of something at least colder as we do head into the second half of the month with that high pressure potentially moving out to our west and our north. Not necessarily mean that exact pattern that we'll see in a minute is showing, but definitely shows that the potential is there. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, for two starts on the live radar, it's another dry and mild evening. We're recording this around half seven on Tuesday evening. And you can see there's a few odd showers off the west coast of Scotland. But for most, again, it is bone dry. Quite a lot of cloud around, so it's been a bit miserable once again. And you can see it's a little bit chilly across the eastern parts of Scotland, where we have some slightly clearer skies. But further south and westwards, where we're dragging up a very mild southerly wind you can see that it is very mild and again that big dividing line between the air mass is very evident over europe towards our east and across eastern europe into asia very cold air to the west much milder with the high pressure plonked right over the top of us allowing that northerly wind around the eastern side of the high and a southerly wind on the western side and that's why we've got this a big split what we're starting to see perhaps in the longer term is this high pressure moving more out in the atlantic meaning that we could be on that northern and eastern side of the high potentially allowing those colder air masses to develop it we want to keep a very close eye on but that's what we're seeing in those long range charts now do look at the next five days from the latest ukv you see not too much going on precipitation wise over the coming days a few bits and bobs of rain but mostly just some thicker cloud as we head into later this week, we can start to see a bit more precipitation in the west, perhaps even a bit of persistent rain at times through the weekend, a bit of a transient weather front moving through there on Sunday. Pretty weak, but a bit more rain and some clearer skies in the west. And it's all because the high pressure does weaken for a time. You can see high pressure is still fairly in control, but we've got this slight low trying to nudge in, and it does give a shift in that air mass for a short period of time. Now, if you look at the max temperatures, you can see as we head into Wednesday, it's another fairly mild day. Slightly chillier the further eastwards we go, but mostly it is mid-teens. A couple of degrees above, a couple of degrees below into Thursday. It's a very similar story, again, widely around the low to mid-teens. And the same for Friday, slightly chillier, perhaps in some northern areas, a bit more thicker cloud around, maybe only high single digits, but still not amazingly cold. And the same could be said for Sassay, a bit chillier in the north and east, but still mild further southwards and westwards. And that continues into Sunday, where we could get back up to the mid-teens once again. So temperatures are going up and down. They are oscillating over the coming days, but generally don't deviate too far from the average to slightly above average and it does look as I said fairly dry just slightly more precipitation potentially appearing with that slight weather front into the weekend but if we do now have a look at those longer range charts just a little snippet there of what we end up with at 384 hours you can see we've got high pressure in control at the moment we do see that brief little low move through the weekend but really nothing major you can see high pressure firmly built back in towards the start of next week but this is where interest starts to build you see there is a big low through the weekend and start of next week out across northeast canada expected with a fairly strong jet stream but wavy that's allowing this high to build. 
But watch what happens next week. That low is weakened and replaced by high pressure. And this allows that high pressure to retrogress and move up towards Greenland. And yes, it takes a bit of time with some cooler easterly flows in the meantime. But as we head towards the end of the month, high pressure firmly controls over Greenland up towards Iceland. And look at this chart, a full blown northeasterly straight from the Arctic with very cold air moving in. Now, of course, it is still November, so it's difficult to say exactly how cold it will be. But no doubt with this chart, the minus five isotherm moving in, the potentially the minus 10 isotherm moving in, no doubt that snow would be widespread across northern regions, maybe even southern regions, if we did get that very cold air further southwards as well. If you do look at the midday dew points here, you can see all around freezing or below freezing, especially as we head sort of Midlands northwards, and that's just because the cold air hasn't quite reached the far southeast yet, but that would be conducive to snow. And we look at the two metre temperatures, widely northern areas, low single digits, if not towards freezing, and even southern areas still in slightly milder air, only four or five degrees. If we look at total snow depth, you can see snow starting to fall in northern regions, and you can generally see it would be very cold indeed. You can see those upper air temperatures down towards the minus five to minus 10 regions, and that very cold air is very close by. So a pretty remarkable run there from the GFS today, full blown northeasterly. These charts rarely come off, so I wouldn't again say this is definitively gonna happen or even has a high chance of happening, but it's definitely an option. And again, it follows nicely from the trends that we've been looking at the past few days. And again, definitely does give some evidence to the fact that there is a risk of something colder into the second half of the month. It definitely is something cropping up in the models. It's not just a few anomalous runs now. We're seeing this fairly consistently, or at least signs of this. And you can see today it does go full blown northeasterly. It's very cold. Temperature deviations well below average, potentially even 10 to 12 degrees below average coming in for northern regions. And you can see it emphasized here on the potential equivalent temperature. Look at all that exceptionally cold air exiting out of the Arctic. And we have to remember, this is coming into the last week of November. So really the only the first sort of few days of when proper cold conditions become possible. Imagine this a month later or six weeks later, late December into January, this would be exceptionally cold. We would be talking about widespread below freezing. Uh, even during the daytime. So almost fortunate this is coming end of November. We would be in for a big freeze. Again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. It is white in the extended range. And again, there's not that much support from ensembles, but it's the fact that we keep seeing this sort of blocking pattern and some of these sort of runs appearing from the GFS fairly consistently now in that longer range. Interestingly, we need to see if we've got any backup here from the GM and the ECMWF. Now, of course, they only got to day 10, so we're not expecting to see the same charts at 384 hours. This is a good five, six days before that. But do we see hints of that blocking starting to develop? You can see that brief low nudges in through the weekend, but high pressure firmly in control into next week. Very similar to the other, uh, other GFS, high pressure starts to replace the lows towards Northeast Canada. So the first signs of blocking and high pressure retrogressing and moving westwards and eventually towards day 10 we do see that occurring now it's not a stronger block towards Greenland and it's not as much of a direct northerly but it's very similar in the fact that high pressure is moving westwards and I would not be surprised to see all this cold air come flooding our way now of course it takes a fairly long sea track here um, again it doesn't show it too well here because we're on a flat map but if we looked at this on actually a globe scale you can see the, the distance from southern Greenland to the UK is much much longer than to this cold air that is towards the east of Greenland and uh, between uh, sorry between Iceland and Scandinavia so it take a much longer sea track so it would be moderated quite a bit more and probably wouldn't be snow to low-lying areas but it would be cold it would be chilly and would open the door to potentially more of a potent northerly or northeasterly if that blocking gets going but nonetheless it is not exactly the same as the gfs but starting to set up a similar pattern high pressure to our west low pressure the tropospheric polar vortex towards scandinavia opening the door to a very cold end to November. So again, interesting nonetheless. Not showing the exact same pattern, but definitely potentially going there and developing that into the longer range. 
And if you compare to the ECMWF, again, broadly very similar over the next few days, high pressure in control. As we enter the longer range, we do see that easterly, so uh, uh, easterly flow starting to develop as high pressure tries to move westwards. But at day 10, we do see that high pressure moving westwards, but it's not really penetrating as much into the Arctic up towards Greenland yet. So that would mean we'd stay colder, northeasterly winds, um, or northeasterly flow, let's just say, because it's not particularly strong northeasterly. You can see there is some cold air there. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if we go up to the surface conditions. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit chilly. Now, we can't quite see the two meter temperatures here. They've not fully run yet, but we would be expecting sort of mid single digits, maybe high single digits at best at day 10 and overnight frost. So it is a cold pattern, it's a chilly pattern, frosty pattern, but nothing too extreme and nothing too unusual for mid November. But again, shows some potential, but nowhere near as much as the other runs do for colder weather. Now, if you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you can still see massive scatter appearing in the longer term, so much more scattered than we were seeing even two days ago, which means that this mild high pressure days are numbered. Not numbered though in two or three days, probably five, six, seven days at the earliest. So we've still got a probably a full week of this sort of high pressure gloominess around. Could be a bit of a change maybe with the weather front over the weekend, but I wouldn't hold on to any major change in the near future. But it's beyond that, around that 13th to 15th of November mark, we could be seeing a big change. And as I said, lots of colder runs starting to appear here, more going down to the minus five line, which would be indicative of potentially snowy or wintry conditions, definitely in the north, smaller risk further southwards, but a risk nonetheless, and precipitation starting to pick up. So we're not seeing massive shifts day on day, but if you look at this same ensemble chart three days ago, you'll be able to see there is a notable colder and more unsettled shift in that medium to longer range, and notably more uncertainty, which means those colder, more unsettled runs with those north and northeasterly winds are gaining traction. Not rapidly, not sort of, uh, sort of overturning overnight that like we can see sometimes, but definitely gaining traction and continuing to gain interest. So no guarantees, but definitely once again, another day where that risk just increases just a little bit more. If you look at the two meter temperatures as well, you can definitely see a quite a big downwards trend towards single digits, even from some of the milder runs. So again, not looking uh, like we're going to see this sort of mid teens hang around for too much longer. And of course, if you look at the dew points, quite a few colder runs appearing as well, just generally a drop. So again, a colder feel likely in the longer term. Now, after you finish by looking at the latest on sobbles for the ECMWF, broadly very similar. It takes a little bit longer to get going, and this is expected. We've seen similar trends over the past few days. GFS has always been a little bit more bullish than the ECMWF, but it is trending colder as well, just as a little bit slower. But again, very similar trends, turning much cooler or more towards average, at least from the ensembles here around the middle of the month. And then the risk of something a bit colder and more unsettled as we head into the final half or third. So again, we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. Still speculation at this stage, but yeah, would be some very good predictions from the GFS if we did see something uh, potent into the second half of the month because the GFS has been slowly hinting over the past few days and fully gone for it today with a full-blown northeasterly wind. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But again, another day of quite a lot of interest. Just got to wait now for this eye pressure and a kind of miserable, dirty high to pass, which should hopefully happen in the next week or so. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.